Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us here online. I'm meteorologist Ryan Breton from News Center, Maine. I know some of our viewers may be watching this with interest, family in Florida, and some of you from other places may be watching this, getting caught up on the latest on this uh, Category 5 hurricane as of Monday evening. It explosively strengthened uh, during the day on Monday, literally in the course of 24 hours from Sunday morning to Monday morning, going from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane. So we'll break down some of the forecast factors going forward, the concerns for Florida and get you caught up to speed on the latest with this storm as of Monday evening. Uh, the latest advisory from the Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds to 180 miles per hour. The storm moving to the east at 10, a little bit of interaction with land here over the Yucatan, but fortunately, unfortunately, you know, in regard to the, the Florida coast, it won't really make landfall here, fortunately for them, uh, but that means that there's plenty of warm water for it to travel over and maintain some of its strength. Now, right now, this is a small storm in terms of its geographic size, and it won't maintain this top intensity for a long period of time because these storms tend to cycle, especially when they get to this upper echelon of strength. But what may happen in a day or two is when its intensity goes down, the storm may grow in size and that's not a good thing for Florida so don't necessarily focus on the category assigned to the storm that's directly related to the wind speed but either way this will be a pretty bad storm and one that will reshape parts of the west coast of Florida with its devastating storm surge wanted to point out this is a look at the hurricane landfalls going back to 1950 and this storm is also unique in the sense that it will be taking a track we really have not seen since 1950 you have to go back uh, longer than that to see a landfall of this type into the tampa bay region now where it makes landfall within this cone of uncertainty, which represents where the center point of the storm would go, would have a big impact on who sees the worst storm surge flooding. If it takes this exact middle path, as indicated by the Hurricane Center, Tampa Bay would be in it and everywhere to the south. If it goes north of Tampa Bay, all of this region would get into the storm surge flooding. And conversely, if it goes south of Tampa Bay, it would be more southwest Florida that gets the most storm surge flooding. And we'll show you more on that coming up in just a moment. So here is the forecast track of the storm through the day on Wednesday. The Hurricane Center now forecasts it to maintain this Category 5 strength into Tuesday night. But realize these storms do sometimes fluctuate with their intensity, so it's possible it could weaken or strengthen a bit more. But either way, it looks like it'll be on approach to the Florida coast as a major hurricane. Intensity forecasting can be pretty challenging. It may weaken somewhat or strengthen somewhat, but either way, we are looking at a hit from what's likely to be a major hurricane that's growing in size as it makes an approach to the west coast of Florida. Now this here would be Wednesday night, the Hurricane Center projecting a landfall as a category three hurricane near the Tampa Bay area. But again, it could be a little bit farther north. That's what this cone represents, or it could be a little bit farther south. And depending on which track it takes, it's better news for one part of the coast and worse news for another part of the coast. And then beyond that, it's expected to reemerge in the Atlantic category one hurricane forecast off the east coast of Florida Thursday afternoon, which would then present challenges for the space coast and the north coast of Florida up towards Savannah, Georgia as well. And these are some places that also saw coastal flooding during Helene. This is the updated storm surge forecast. So in other words, the ocean water, the coastal flooding brought in by the storm and water rise above normally dry ground. The forecast now for the Tampa Bay region is for a 10 to 15 foot storm surge as this hurricane comes on shore. And again, it will depend on exactly where the center of the storm goes. If it comes right into Tampa, the water will get ushered into Tampa Bay, as will all of southwest Florida see significant potentially major coastal flooding and storm surge. But on the flip side, the wind on the north side of the center would be coming across the land, and that would actually help push water out. So the worst flooding would be near and south of the center of the storm, and that's why it's important where it exactly makes landfall, especially given how many people live around Tampa Bay. If it ends up being south, 
of Tampa Bay. They would be spared the worst storm surge, but if it's near or north of Tampa Bay, they would have a significant and historic storm surge event, unlike something we have seen in decades in Tampa Bay. So that is probably the part of the forecast that is going to be most closely watched over the next 24 to 36 hours. Will the center of the storm go near or north of Tampa Bay or just a bit south, which would spare them the worst of the coastal flooding? Either way, evacuations have already been ordered as a result of the potential for a devastating storm surge on the west coast of Florida. Hurricane warnings extend far inland tropical storm warnings for parts of southwest Florida. And then as the storm maintains some strength into the Atlantic, a hurricane watch is up from the Treasure Coast through the Space Coast up into da Jacksonville and surrounding that there are tropical storm watches as well. So we'll take a quick look here at a simulation of this forecast track going forward. This is the Hurricane Center's forecast overlaid with one of our computer models. And you can see there is some jogging here and there, but it stays within this cone. And the idea is that it will make a landfall Wednesday night somewhere in the Tampa Bay region. But again, it could be a bit north or a bit south. That would impact who sees the worst storm surge flooding with the big fetch and waves coming in off the ocean and it would also affect how many people see uh, the strongest winds within the eye wall of the storm as well. And then you can see it does maintain strength into Thursday as it departs off the Atlantic coast of Florida. So that is the update for now. The National Hurricane Center's next track update will be at 11 p.m. this evening. They come out with those every six hours, 11 p.m., 5 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. You can get those on our website, newcentermain.com, and follow us here for updates as well.